All right, well, I just realized I forgot to film an intro this morning uh, before I got out here. Got out around 8.30 or so. Uh, yesterday was uh, Tropical Storm Isaiah. I think that's how you say it, Isaiah? I don't know. But anyway, uh, the Tropical Storm came through today. Water is really cold. Temperature is a little bit cold too. Uh, almost no wind, it was beautiful conditions. Uh, my goal was, uh, which was successful, was to use the Salty Ned, uh, the Ned rig for uh, saltwater fishing. It's basically the same. Uh, the idea is it's a flat jig head with a small soft plastic buoyant bait and what it does is it sinks and uh, the jig head sinks and the buoyant bait sits upright and you work it really slow kind of just shaking it on the bottom a little bit as you go do a little hop stuff like that but it's a really slow moving bait the weird thing is is it doesn't really look like anything specific but it drives bass crazy um, and they've been using it for a long time. I've been using it for a few months now and with bass fishing and had some good luck. So I wanted to try it out here uh, in what's called the Salty Ned Rig, which is using it for inshore fishing. And I had some good results. I lost a couple of really good fish, um, but it was a good day for trout. Ended up uh, keeping two and I'm actually gonna do a catch and cook. Uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna do a speckled trout ceviche. Uh, I've done it a few times at home the last couple of weeks. Just haven't made a video with it before. I've never done a catch a cook video, but uh, I'm looking forward to it. It should be fun. Uh, enjoy the fishing and then stay tuned at the end for my uh, catch and cook. All right, thanks guys. All right, the TRD, people call it the turd, but really it stands for the real deal. Caught a croaker, I think, on a, a salty Ned. All right, well, let's see if uh, I can do that again. I was just slowly reeling it in and shaking it. Nice little trout on the salty net. Definitely small, but uh, pretty little fish. Come on, buddy. Let me get a. Okay, well, works for me. Oh, that's a good trout. Oh. <laughs> nice. That was on the TRD, aka Salty Ned, the turd, the turd lure. <laughs> the TRD. Uh, hanging out of his mouth there. Get a quick measurement so I know if I'm keeping him. Yeah, just a hair over 14, but he's coming home. Trout. Looks small though. Right, it's weird. It's long, but it's really skinny. So, let's see. Another nice, pretty fish. Let him go.
Another good trout. a good trout. Just get a measurement on it. I think he'll keep. Nice 14 and a half inch trout. Another keeper. Gonna have a good catch and cook. Hey what's going on everybody? I'm doing the catch and cook part of the video now. Uh, I got back uh, got myself cleaned up and everything, and uh, just rinsed off the fish, get them a little bit less slimy. Uh, whenever you put them on ice, take them out of the water or whatever, they start getting a little bit slimy. So, got the two trout here, ready to go. First things first, I'm gonna sharpen up my knife, get them filleted, and then start the cutting, uh, get it to nice and ceviche size. Uh, this isn't like a how to fillet a fish video or anything like that, so I'm just gonna kinda get to it. The only thing I will say is don't cut all the way through the skin at the end of the tail. It makes it a lot easier to cut the skin off of the filet because it gives you a starting point, cut down. Just like that, nice and clean. Let me go ahead and do the other side. Go ahead and cut the root cages out of these boys. At this point, I like to um, go ahead and rinse off the board and also the knife, the fillets, everything, so I can get them nice and cut up. All right, now that you got your nice clean fillets here, what you're gonna go ahead and do is start cutting them up into little cubes. A lot of recipes say like a half inch cube. I find that I prefer something closer like a quarter inch, really small. The smaller you go, the better cooked through it's gonna be, but more importantly, uh, the easier it is to eat on chips, which is what I prefer to do. So what I do is I go one fillet at a time, just nice, small strips. Make sure I get all the way through. So with this recipe, the knife work is probably the hardest part of it because you want the pieces to be as uniform as possible so that you can get um, a nice even cook and you don't have any giant pieces that don't get cooked all the way through. Now we got our nice cut up fish. It's all diced up nice and small. Like that. All right, step two coming up. I like to rinse the fish one last time. Then what I'm gonna do is I put it in a shallow, shallow baking dish. Something, you can use whatever, but it should be flat so that way you can get evenly saturated with the uh, citrus that you use. Uh, I'm gonna use lime and grapefruit today. All right, now that we have all of the fish nicely diced up and in our baking dish, that's what, again what I'm using. You just want something shallow and flat. It's time to add the citrus. Uh, I'm using a juicer. Would absolutely recommend getting one of these. And what we're gonna do is we're adding 
Uh, for this amount of fish, um, which is probably about eight or 10 ounces uh, after we cleaned up those fillets, uh, we're adding four limes and about half a grapefruit. Grapefruit's optional, that's more of a flavor thing. There should be plenty of citrus with just the four limes. All right, so all I do, cut them in half. And it's important to do the citrus on the fish first before you dice up these other things to add because they'll probably um, absorb the citrus before it really gets to do its magic on the fish. So anyway. Next up, now that this is all nice and soaked, you can see it's basically floating. That's gonna ceviche really nice. I'm gonna go ahead and dice up. This is a cucumber. I already skinned it ahead of time or peeled it ahead of time. All right, so now we can go ahead and add the cucumber. Now you can just let it sit on top. Let the uh, juice keep working its magic on the fish. All right, next. I am, so I'm dicing up some basil to throw in there. This is purely um, a personal preference. Some people will do cilantro. I think the original recipe I did called for cilantro, but we grow basil in our garden, and also we like basil a lot better than cilantro. So. It's good enough for me, which I guess is all that really matters, and for Elise. And the final thing we're gonna add at this stage is uh, a little bit of heat. Uh, we like some heat in our ceviche, kinda adds another depth to it. So we are doing a uh, habanero. Um, if you're not a big spice person, you can try a jalapeno. Uh, and it also adds a lot of color to it, as you'll see in a second. Biggest, most important thing is to make sure you get those seeds out of there. So a crucial thing I cannot stress enough, and I make this mistake every single time I work with peppers of any type. Don't touch your face. Don't rub your eye. Don't touch your nose. Don't touch anything on your face. And I'm talking for the rest of the night, at least. It doesn't matter if you've washed your hands. It doesn't matter if you've showered. There's always going to be a little bit more of the oil on your hands. And it always happens, it'll be hours later, and I just rub my nose, I'm sitting on the couch, and 10 minutes later, my face feels like it's on fire. And then two hours later, it still feels like it's on fire. So don't touch your face. With that said, I'm gonna go ahead and dice this up. Same rocking motion with the knife that I did with the basil. Oof, I can smell the heat. All right, add that. So now it's time to go ahead and mix it up. So for uh, the ceviche process, you need to give it at least 45 minutes, up to two hours. You can also keep it overnight if you want to. It'll still, if you have leftover, if you make a big batch like I am right now, and you have some leftover, feel free to keep it and eat it tomorrow. Obviously refrigerate it and cover it. But what I do, mix it all together, get it tapped down nice and even so it's all evenly soaked in the juice. I mean, that already looks so good. Uh, I am getting pretty hungry just looking at it. So, I'm gonna go ahead and put it in the fridge and set the timer for 45 minutes. This feature is just about done, but first I'm gonna go ahead, before I pull it out of the fridge, and dice up some pineapple. This is what we're looking at after 45 minutes. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Mm. Uh, so the final step I go to, go through, is I add the pineapple, it's all diced up, gives it a nice flavor. Then a little salt and pepper to taste. I really don't do too much salt. I like the sweetness of it, just enough to balance it out a little bit. Then you do the final stir. Oh yeah, okay. Well, we are all ready to be eaten now. All right, well, it's time to go ahead and eat it. Uh, everything's all ready to go. 
we're just having a little sample. Our dog's very excited about it. Uh, I like to eat it with some scoops chips or taste of lime, anything like that. This isn't a plug, although if they wanted to sponsor me, that'd be pretty cool. All right. We love that. A nice bite with everything in it. Get that pineapple. Got the pineapple, the habanero, fish. Eh! Oh. She knocked my pineapple off. Can you believe that? It's rude. Mm. All right. That's very good. This isn't a surprise to us. We've made this, or I guess I've made it like five times in the last month. I help eat it. She helps eat it. She's very good at that. Basil is very nice. Thank you. We've done cilantro. Floral. I think we've done a little bit of mint before. She's a foodie, so her uh, her opinion actually means something, not mine. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, you can make this with whiting, red drum, uh, sheep's head for sure. Lots of different stuff. Don't take my word on it though, as a food safety thing. Uh, you can do some research of whatever fish you're gonna try on your own. But um, those are just some fish I made it with. It's really good. But if you let it sit long enough, it should be safe with any fish. If you're watching for mercury, obviously you wanna go for smaller fish. Mm -hmm. Like the trout, pretty low in mercury, I would guess. There you go, you heard it here first. She's food mm -hmm. safety trained, so yeah. any lawsuits, uh, I'll put her information down mm -hmm. below. Um, anyway, thanks for watching if you made it this far. Uh, let me know if you guys do try this recipe. And also, obviously, you can change anything about it. Size the lime, you need the lime. You can change the fruit, you can add no fruit. You can add something besides cucumber if you really wanted to. That's just what traditional ceviche uses. Um, anyway, let me know down below if you try it or if you have any other recipes you want to see me try. Um, I really liked making this video, and uh, obviously I like eating fish, so anyway. And follow me at Cooking with Boots on Instagram. She's gonna plug herself again, that's okay. <laughs> I'll leave it at nice. Anyway, thanks for I'm watching. I'm equally important. She's equally, she's more important. Thanks mm -hmm. for watching, and uh, yeah, stay tuned for more videos.